The Vancouver Canucks have sent this third round pick on an absolute adventure. First, it was traded to Vegas for Nate Schmidt. Then it got traded to Ottawa. I think in the Dadanov trade, it makes it way. It makes its way back to Vancouver in exchange for Travis Hamnick, and they go around and ship it off once again. This time to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, in exchange for Travis Dermott. So to sum up what the Canucks have done today, just to start this off, they traded away Travis Hamnick for a third round pick they took that third round pick and shuttled it off for travis dermott so the travis quota is the same one travis for one travis no real picks in exchange uh here's the big part of it though salary the vancouver canucks go from paying travis hamnick three million dollars a year uh for the rest of this year which doesn't really matter and next year to now paying travis dermott 1.5 million dollars for this year and next year they go from a a uh, defenseman who is 31 years old to a defenseman who is 25 years old in Travis Dermott. Uh, a defenseman who is not very good analytically in Travis Hamnick to a defenseman who is pretty good analytically in Travis Dermott. Um, it's it feels kind of weird to me that they're that they're going out and spending a pick to make this and sort of in a vacuum you look at this and you're like ah it's kind of odd. Um, but if we sort of package that into the whole Travis Hamnick thing. It's really just a, an upgrade. You get, in theory, a better player from from most accounts. Uh, you get six years younger, and you take one and a half million dollars off the cap, and you'll have RFA rights when this contract expires anyway. So you have an actual defensive piece for your future. A 25-year-old, he just turned 25 a few months ago, so he'll still be 25 at the start of next season. Um, as for... Stats wise, he's played 43 games this year, five points only. Uh, he's a plus four, uh, one goal and four assists for those five points, uh, 14 penalty minutes. Uh, he is most known infamously for the play in game six uh, last year in the uh, Maple Leafs and Canadian series uh, where he had a really bad giveaway in, I think, game six overtime uh, when Toronto needed a goal to win the series and they blew it. Uh, and that was kind of a part of it. Uh, he was like the the key factor in that play. Uh, but obviously a player's career isn't defined by one play. He is a young defenseman as per natural stat trick. If we look at some of his analytical um, pieces here, uh, Corsi, while he is on the ice this year, they have been at 54%. Now, keep in mind, he's playing for Toronto, one of the best teams in the NHL right now. Uh, so that might inflate things a little bit, but he's a part of it. He's a part of that team. Uh, six, so 54% Corsi. Uh, expected goals share while he is on the ice is 54.7%. High danger chances share also 54%. So basically 54% across the board um he does start basically even uh where he where he starts a shift so 63 offensive zone starts this year uh compared to 74 in the d zone so he does get put out there in basically all situations 118 neutral zone starts so basically just even all all over the place right 46 percent total offensive zone starts uh so that that lends nicely to the shot share being in his favor right if he's out there for 54% of Toronto's shots uh, while well, he is on the ice. Toronto gets 54% of the shots, uh, but he starts only 46% of his shifts in the offensive zone. That's a, that's a pretty good ratio. And again, he's on Toronto. It helps a little bit. Um, Jay Fresh, who gets his uh, all of his data from Top Down Hockey, uh, and he sort of put it puts a sort of a percentile um, on uh, on each category. Uh, even strength offense, 52nd percentile. So basically, offensively as a defenseman, middle of the pack which is fine. Uh, defensively, 80th percentile. So he's a top 20% uh, defensive impact player uh, or defenseman in the NHL. Um, uh, everything else, that, that's sort of the stuff that's most interesting to me. Um, and he's basically been in the top 35% of defensemen as per that uh, model. And again, the models don't mean everything, um, but he seems to be... Uh, let me just find the uh, exactly what... a. Uh, what I saw on him, I think I saw him basically good skater, um, questionable decision making, um, but hopefully he matures and that develops a little bit uh, and he can improve a little bit better. Uh, but basically, yeah, it ends up being Travis Hamnick for Travis Dermott, basically straight up. Like I said, the Canucks get a six year younger player uh, making half of the money. Uh, and so the Canucks are just building up cap space and they get a pretty solid potential core piece for their future as well. Uh, we'll see what the Maple Leafs do with that. We'll see if they try to, they need to make salary cap stuff work. It looks like for this Giordano trade. So maybe that's why they had to get rid of Travis Dermott and they, and the Canucks had to get their third round pick first. And uh, all these pieces are sort of coming together. Um, 
and maybe that third round pick goes towards that Giordano trade at some point as well. Uh, I don't think the returns come through for that yet, but it will be interesting to see uh, on the Toronto side. Um, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, I'm I'm pretty happy. That I, I'm Travis Dermott seems like he'll be a, a decent addition. Again, third round picks don't amount to much. I was excited about this third round pick just because they got rid of Travis Hamnick, and that was basically a bonus because because Travis Hamnick had negative value in my opinion. Um, but they save space and they get a, a better player who is younger. It, it's just a, a really good start to this trade deadline for the Vancouver Canucks. And I don't know how you could really phrase it any other way when you look at it all, uh, merged together. Uh, give me your thoughts though, in the comments below, make sure you're subscribed, do all that good stuff. Uh, and I hope, uh, you all have a good day. See you later.